Jason. Dear uh, Presidents, uh, I would like first of all uh, thank the organizing committee, especially Costas Parias, for the kind invitation and uh, for his help uh, in the establishment of uh, our uh, program of TAVI valves in, uh, in uh, the Papa Nicolaou Hospital in Thessaloniki. Uh, I'm going to present two cases uh, with the same pattern. Um, there are two cases of uh, female patients with uh, previous uh, mitral valve uh, mechanical uh, placement a few years uh, before the TAVI procedure. Um, what uh, someone has to uh, have in his mind uh, when he's uh, um, having patient with uh, mechanical uh, mitral valve uh, and he needs to do a TAVI procedure, uh, there are three main um, uh, key, uh, points that has to uh, have in uh, his mind. First of all, is that uh, some of uh, the cases uh, they could be underexpanded. This uh, underexpansion could be because of uh, the mitral valve that is uh, not easy to. Uh, it's uh, the mechanical valve. There, there is no uh, side uh, place to uh, help uh, for the extension of uh, the valve. And then uh, there is um, a minimum uh, um, place between the mitral and the aortic annulus, uh, and uh, um, this is uh, going to give difficulties in the expansion of the valve and has to keep that in mind. Second is uh, the embolization of the device, uh, and the third is uh, during the manipulations that we are doing to implant the TAVI valve uh, to uh, make uh, uh, the difficulties and uh, to uh, have a problem with uh, the previous implanted uh, mechanical uh, mitral valve. Generally, uh, this uh, kind of patient is uh, not uh, easy to... Uh, it, it wasn't the first cases that someone has to start with uh, the TAVI valves. And um, in the beginning, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, for the TAVI valves uh, to be used in such cases. Uh, in 2017, uh, there is a report, a review uh, of uh, 37 uh, reports for 140 cases in the literature, uh, with um, uh, from 2 to 40 patients, depends on the centers, that they did uh, so. And uh, they implanted TAVI valves. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, success, uh, with success. Our patients, uh, the first one is a lady 76 years old, diabetes mellitus. Uh, she had uh, in the second uh, month of uh, 2015 implantation of DDR pacemaker and uh, May 2017 uh, she had a mitral valve replacement. Generally her condition wasn't very well and uh, has uh, renal insufficiency. Um, so, uh, for the procedure, what we did, uh, we decided to use uh, a 26 evolutor valve. Uh, you could uh, have in uh, the first uh, uh, video before the implantation. Here is uh, uh, where we have the, we decided to to implant the valve with. Uh, uh, not using uh, predilatation, and uh, here is the valve. Uh, what you have uh, e to be very careful is uh, uh, to find uh, the the best uh, um, angulation in order to see where is the valve, uh, the mitral valve, and uh, the new to be implanted in order to not interfere uh, the two valves when they will be in uh, action. Uh, here is uh, the starting of the opening of uh, the valve and uh, here is uh, the, the last uh, before uh, opening uh, the, the valve and uh, this is uh, our um, um, end and uh, is uh, the, um, the final result uh, 
both uh, the place of uh, the valve is uh, very good and uh, the valve is uh, working uh, well. Here are, uh, before the implantation, um, the TOE, and um, you could see uh, the implantation of uh, the valve, and um, then this is uh, a month later, uh, the results. We have the two valves very well working, uh, no uh, major regurgitation for uh, the, the aortic uh, valve that we implanted. And um, this is uh, the next uh, case. This is uh, 73 years old, again with diabetes mellitus in atrial fibrillation. She had a mitral valve replacement in 2010. And um, this is uh, 10 days uh, before the first case. And uh, here is uh, the first uh, uh, before the implantation of uh, the valve. Here is uh, our uh, valve when it's starting to uh, open. Uh, we have uh, um, um, an uh, um, aortic uh, regurgitation. And uh, then uh, we decided uh, uh, to post-dilatate the valve uh, because uh, our thought it was that here uh, wasn't very well uh, expanded and uh, after the first uh, uh, dilatation there's still uh, a problem and then we did uh, a second dilatation and the final result it was very good and the patient um, ameliorates all the hemodynamic uh, situation of uh, uh, her uh, um, um, profile uh, and um, we thought that uh, this is the final uh, uh, post dilatation and we thought that uh, everything was finished and this is the case of the, the worst case it's why it was the worst case and uh, there was a big leakage uh, and we oops sorry Uh, may we have the last uh, uh, video, the last video with, uh, yes, that, that one, yes. And this is uh, uh, the final uh, result of uh, the problem uh, that, uh, and the patient went back uh, to the coronary care unit and a few days later uh, she went home and again she came back, uh, she's very well and with uh, not a problem. So as I uh, said in the beginning, uh, the, the most important thing in uh, these cases is uh, that you should be careful on the extension of the valve and uh, in, you, you need to be very careful as well in not to interfere and during your manipulations with uh, the mechanical mitral valve. Uh, that's it, thank you. Uh, before finishing, I would like to thank all the team of uh, the um, uh, Papa Nicolaou Hospital. Um, it's uh, Dr. Mavrogiani, uh, Dr. Asteri, who is our anesthesiologist, and uh, um, Dr. Drossus, who is our surgeon, and uh, the vascular surgeons, Trelopoulos and Megalopoulos, it's the team, uh, because uh, um, you should have a team when uh, you are using. Uh, I think that uh, Dr. Sparians knows very well all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kafkas have a, has a question. Uh, John, congratulations. When we have patients like this with mechanical valve in mitral uh, valve, um, which is the best type of, uh, of valve, the best choice? It depends on uh, the calcification of the, the valve, best, but the, uh, we used, we used uh, self-expanded valves and uh, uh, we, use, we are using the Evolute uh, our, uh, valves um, as far as my, our experience. That's it. I don't know if uh, Dr. Sparius has to discuss and give any...
Your best uh, guess would be to go with a repositionable, receivable, retractable valve because if something happens, uh, you can uh, remove it, change position. Um, the, sometimes, uh, if the frame of uh, the core valve, the Evolute R, catches the metallic disc, it may be difficult just to pull it, especially with the old core valve. There was a problem. But now with the Evolute, even if you go too deep at your first attempt, uh, you can easily pull it back. So my first choice for uh, this type of uh, anatomy with metallic mitral valve will be a uh, self-expandable metronic valve. The best and the only? So Not the only. We have done uh, Edwards also in some cases, but um, the common rationale says that you should go with something you can correct if something goes wrong. Uh, I have a, just a question since we are still talking. Of course. <laughs> um, in the, the complication case, um, I think you can see um, the um, internal femoral artery and I wonder if your puncture was low because when you put the stand there, the self-expandable stand, I see it, it starts, it begins below um, the external artery. So I wonder if that was the reason of this complication, if, if you can go back to the I may be wrong, and I may take wrongly that uh, artery as the um, external femoral artery. Can, can, we, can we see the last slide of uh, the presentation? Uh, no. The uh, last slide and uh, the, la the very last slide. Of the the very last slide, yes. No, it wasn't wasn't the right place. We did it uh, uh, every time we are you, you we're doing uh, the puncture with uh, retro. Uh, we have a roadmap, and it was uh, uh, in uh, the right way that uh, you teaches us. And uh, um, there was a problem with uh, the um, uh, uh, proglide that we. The, the second proglide didn't uh, was in the right place, and that's wh why we had uh, the the main problem with uh, the leakage. So we tried to to use a third one, but uh, with not uh, success. So uh, then we used the balloon. Uh, we stopped the um, uh, running, and uh, then uh, we went uh, through the other leg with. Uh, the um, the stand a uh, stand graft and we did a uh, post dilatation because uh, uh, before the post dilatation uh, with a bigger balloon uh, we had some small leakage uh, but then you saw the, the result it's fine and the the patient is fine she's walking very well and the problem was that it was a very a huge lady, uh, and she had some uh, problems with uh, the warfaring because she was in warfaring, not in uh, uh, because of. Uh... Uh, a last comment: as a interventional cardiologist, all of us want to perform the cases totally pertinently. I wonder, in cases with severe tortuosity in iliac arteries, uh, calcification. Uh, if it is better to call the vascular surgery, surgeons before to have an open access and not to perform pectinoscopy. Maybe it's also cheaper. It's not. Especially it's not. From, it's per, the opposite. from uh, pro star is cheaper, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a topic of presentation Safer. this morning on this, uh, on peripheral access, and from literature it appears that it's more expensive because it prolongs the length of stay in the hospital considerably. And also it's not safer. Vascular complications were higher in one study, um, the only study, um, that compared the per true percutaneous access with the surgical cut down. And also um, the uh, local uh, infections are much higher after open access. So I would not recommend it um, to go um, with surgical cut down. 
Dr. Nikas and Dr. Patakos. I'll, I'll be very quick. Uh, as a surgeon, you know, when I started, I thought, you know, yeah, cut down, safe, good, easy. No, I, d I disagree, and uh, I think ProGlide is the way to go. Because if you look at the data from uh, with the Partner 2 trial, there, there's a lower rate of vascular complications when you go, um, when you go percutaneously. So I'm data-driven. I don't care if I'm a surgeon or what my job title is. I care about what's best for the patient, and what's best for the patient is that. And in, in the cases where you have the truly bad vessels, uh, I was trained as a cardiovascular surgeon, so I've done lower extremity bypasses and abdominal aneurysms and all of this. So from, from my viewpoint, there's, there's not much that you're going to offer by doing a cut down. And even if you go to the iliac artery and you sew a graft, it becomes very complicated. It becomes very complicated. So I think whatever you can do from the femoral, you can do it well uh, percutaneously. Once you have to do a cut down, most of the times, not always, but most of the time, if you really are thinking about doing a cut down, maybe you should think about alternative access if you're, if you're really good at doing a, a femoral artery sticks and, and cannulation. I, I wonder what Dimitri Snikas thinks about that. No, I, I totally agree with you, but uh, I, just, I just want to comment on this previous, the one that you said, I think that the, really the puncture was really low because we can see in the, in the profunda and uh, after the, the graft is, it, uh, was put, I'm not sure where, whether it was put in the right place because from the peripheral point of view, it's, it's a place which is restricted for stent grafts because it's a flexion point. So, yeah, it's, it's, if the patient walks, this would absolutely going to get from both or, or, or with fracture in, in a couple of steps. We, dis we discussed that with uh, the surgeons and because uh, we, don't, uh, we didn't uh, do the procedure by ourselves. Uh, they came and we discussed that uh, in order to have an open access or to use a stent graft. And uh, the surgeon said that uh, for himself it's uh, safe and uh, there is no problem uh, for the patient uh, to walk uh, uh, because it was uh, one of our... Uh, uh, problems that uh, could be uh, a restriction for uh, the lady, but um, he said no, and uh, the result is uh, on his side. I mean, the patient still very well; she's still walking and with no symptoms uh, from. Uh, and we did uh, an, uh, an angiogram uh, and we did uh, a Doppler test for her, and she's fine. Um, that's really good okay. to know because this is a point that we're always afraid. If someone, if something happens like like this to everybody, it's something that's always a question whether to put a stent graft or just to cut down the mm -hmm. artery and repair it surgically. But as you said, if we have this very good result with stent graft, that's really a relief for us. That's okay. Thank